And uh, my name is Russell Bay, and I'll be the host of the uh, webinar tonight. I'm the chairman of the Business and Legal Studies programs uh, here at uh, Penn Foster, and we're happy to have Debbie Valla Ben Ben Nenny here. <laughs> Hey, the pad doesn't sound like it. I'm sorry, I murdered your last name. All good. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, here's our presenter uh, for this webinar. I will uh, be turning the webinar over to Debbie in just a few moments. Um, but uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the webinar today uh, will be recorded. Um, and uh, we will be posting the recording to the academic business area of the community. So uh, we expect that we should have that up sometime later this week. If not, it will probably be Tuesday by Tuesday of next week. Um, so you can, if you miss part of it or um, you know you want to uh, review it again, you certainly can do that uh, on the community. Um, we. Uh, we hope that we'll uh, find. I, we hope that you'll find the webinar uh, tonight to be interesting and and hopefully informative. Um, Debbie's going to case study on uh, Chipotle at Mexican Grill, um, and uh, hopefully you learn a few things about using uh, business concepts uh, and and how they're they're used in uh, decision making at companies. So uh, before we start, I, let me just do a little housekeeping here um, so that everyone's ready and, and familiar with the webinar and control panel. I think many of you have already uh, uh, posted questions uh, started. Um, but I just want to uh, first um, re uh, let you know that uh, when you look at the uh, control panel on the right-hand side, of your it should be on the right hand side of your screen uh, and you minimize that panel by clicking on the arrow in the upper left corner of the control panel. Uh, you, you can try uh, clicking on that just to, to see how it works. You click on it to uh, enlarge it as well. So um, that will kind of move it out of the way if it's taking up too much space on your screen. Uh, second, you have the ability to submit questions and answers asked by Debbie is during the webinar uh, by using the question pane uh, located at the bottom or near the bottom of the uh, control panel. So um, I, I say at this point, why don't everybody just uh, try uh, uh, putting in a question, uh, share your name and where you're from, um, just to make sure that we'll uh, we'll be able to you'll be able to uh, use this in the middle of the webinar a couple already and I'm just going to wait a moment here and oh there's a whole bunch okay so it also reassures me that you can hear me um, so we have people from all over the place Texas New York Virginia Alaska Kentucky North Carolina uh, the, uh, the Turks and uh, let's see Belize Wow Chicago uh, so we have people from all over the place here. It looks like everybody's hearing me okay. Um, so we have a large number of students tonight. Um, we have around 100 at the moment, uh, and I think there's still a few people signing on. So we're going to try to answer your questions as we're going through the webinar. This is a, 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 a webinar where you can participate. Um, you can ask questions, and Debbie's going to ask you questions as well. So feel free to respond to those. Um, we've allowed one hour for this webinar, um, but if it goes uh, over an hour, that's OK. Um, if it goes less than an hour, that, that's OK, too. So um, I think that covers the housekeeping. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce our presenter. It's Debbie. Uh, I'm not even going to try the last name. <laughs> that's OK. <laughs> She earned an MBA from Harvard Business School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. Uh, Debbie currently serves on the admissions board for Harvard Business School um, for outreach and evaluation of candidates worldwide. And among other things, she's also the author of the materials for our Introduction to Business course. 
So I'm going to turn over the mic to Debbie, and uh, you can go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much, Russell. First of all, uh, thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your evening today to join us. Um, I do hope you find it um, uh, informative and exciting, uh, especially when you go to your next Chipotle, um, uh, on your next visit, I should say. Um, the whole purpose of today is, you know, we learn a lot in class, and sometimes it feels very theoretical and everything, and today we're going to be applying some of the concepts that you've learned to a real-life company. Um, a company that perhaps many of you have already experienced as a consumer, and now we're going to kind of dig a little bit deeper from a business perspective. So um, with that uh, said, why don't we um, jump to our first slide. Uh, I should say, uh, yeah, or, or I should say to our, to the second slide under today's discussion. It's uh, it, it probably um, takes a minute to update the screen, given the large number of people on the call, maybe. Yeah, it's not. That's weird. It's not uh, changing slides. You you still see the beginning slide, right? That's correct. There we go. All right, is it showing up now? Okay. Yep. For some reason it wasn't showing up before. Okay. Um, so, okay, so you should have today's discussion. Yep. So, um, so today it's going to be not just a traditional lecture, but it's going to be very interactive. Um, your experiences, your thoughts, your opinions, they're very much welcome today. That's how we learn from each other. And especially since this is a company that, um, if you've been to a Chipotle, we'd like to hear about your experience. If you haven't, then you know you, you can use this as a learning opportunity. And if you do happen to, you know, be a consumer there uh, at a given time in the future, you can kind of use what we talked about today as a frame of reference for when you do go to uh, a Chipotle. And like I said, I have no vested interest in promoting Chipotle. There are a couple things that happened to them last year that I think it's worth noting um, from a business perspective and from a kind of a, a learning perspective, which is why I chose them in terms of so we can understand um, how they have to make a few decisions kind of going forward. Um, and that's how we can learn from them too. So um, uh, kind of how the discussion is broken up today is we're going to talk about the company's background. First, uh, spend a few minutes there, then talk about what happened to them in 2015. It was a very challenging year for them. And then uh, spend um, a few moments on what's next for Chipotle. So that way, you know, we can say, where have they been, where they are today, and where are they going to go forward? And in all these cases, it's important to kind of understand how they're making decisions because how they make decisions may affect how we make decisions on our job or how our employers make decisions. So it's a good um, good way to see it from their perspective. Um, so that's the goal today. There are no wrong answers. So we encourage your your participation. And uh, like I said, think of this as just a, a, a you know a virtual water cooler kind of conversation you're having with your colleagues at work about um, uh, about a topic. So it's an, it's designed to be informative yet um, informal in terms and when I say informal in, in terms of your opinions matter your experiences matter. So with that said, why don't we then move into the company background? Um, so that would be slide three. Okay, I switched it over. It's not it seemed to be updating. Can you, do you see slide three there, Debbie? Not yet. Huh. What's going on here? Um, hold on a moment. I'll let me just try something here.
Okay, we seem to be having technical difficulties here. I can't seem to get it to. Hmm. Oh, there it is. It there moved. Okay. There we go. It forwarded to the uh, to slide three. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. That seems to be a problem with the. I I have to pause and then unpause in order to make it change the slide there. Um, so I apologize. Uh, there seems to be some technical difficulties with the uh, GoToWebinar tonight. Okay, uh, go ahead. No problem. Thank you. So Chipotle was founded in 1993. So they've been in business for now over 25 years. So by Steve Ells. And um, I think one of the interesting facts about the company is that he graduated from the Culinary Institute of America, so one of the top cooking schools in the country. And so he actually brings kind of a, a different philosophy to the company um, as opposed to kind of saying, you know, uh, I, I see this need in the market. He is approaching the company and the services it provides and also the food from a, you know, chef type of perspective from a, from a person who makes food versus a person who sells food. So, um, so when I was researching this company, I found that quite interesting. I think it sets apart um, Chipotle from perhaps some of its competitors. So um, as a result of his um, culinary training, you know, the use of high quality ingredients is an important part of the company philosophy. So I think that's why a lot of consumers like Chipotle because they feel that it's fresh or that it's um, that you know it's vegetable. It's like it can be somewhat healthy maybe, but it's about using high quality raw ingredients, which can then you know be a foundation for a high quality kind of food. Um, using the second kind of uh, component in his philosophy is use classic cooking techniques. Now, somebody who's kind of really studied cooking from a science perspective. You can see why they they believe in techniques um, that techniques are important in terms of how the food is prepared. Now the last factor in terms of a distinctive interior design, I think he wanted to make sure that it doesn't come across as kind of fast food. Yes, it is fast food, but I think when they were designing Chipotle, they wanted to be um, to have a, to have its own unique look, and that it's, uh, and that look be consistent across um, all their locations. So that way you know kind of that you're going into a Chipotle and you know what to expect from a consumer. So you know, in those 25 years, it has grown to about 2,000 locations and 60,000 employees worldwide. Uh, and just last year, the sales were 4.5 billion. Um, so that's a lot of, that's a lot of burritos. <laughs> um, but in, in, in comparison, McDonald's, is uh, about 25 billion in sales. So obviously a lot smaller than uh, McDonald's, but believe me, Chipotle is giving a run, uh, giving McDonald's a run for its money. So um, uh, in terms of uh, a little bit of trivia for you, uh, so uh, true false. Uh, uh, let's just you know, so let's pretend we're on kind of Jeopardy, and I have a question out there. So true false. McDonald's at one time owned a portion of Chipotle. So the question is, did um, uh, McDonald's ever own Chipotle? And we'll give you a couple minutes to kind of uh, type in your answer. OK, I've got and a bunch of false, false <laughs> coming. One false, true. OK, OK. Yeah, I don't think so. No, but, uh, <laughs> no that's, that's a good answer, yep. Uh, there's a bunch of no's. Um, OK. Very, very few yeses. Basically, the okay. crowd is basically saying no. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, it is true. Uh, from McDonald's invested in Chipotle um, and owned a part of Chipotle from 1998 to 2006. Um, and the reason for that is McDonald's viewed Chipotle as somebody as a company who's fast growing, somebody that doesn't necessarily compete with them. But, uh, but uh, you know, why not invest in somebody who's doing something cool and different and make us some money? Um, so that's basically, you know, I'm, I'm obviously kind of paraphrasing, you know, uh, uh, eight years of investment into two sentences, but that's actually kind of what happened. And, you know, what's an interesting fact is um, McDonald's wanted Chipotle to install drive-through windows <laughs> to increase sales at the Chipotle restaurants. 
And this was the turning point for Steve Ells, the founder, um, and that's when he realized that, you know, that the two companies are very different. They have different missions. They view kind of customer service differently. And, uh, and it was a sign that it was probably time to kind of depart and go their own separate ways. Um, and so it, it goes to show that, you know, yes, people may want to invest in, or McDonald's may want to invest in Chipotle because it really grew in such a short amount of time. Um, uh, and, you know, it's a kind of a, more of a financial investment. Uh, but, you know, they're very different companies. There are very different philosophies. Um, there are very different company cultures. And here, the founder is still really involved. In McDonald's, you know, the founder is no longer involved. So you can already see um, that there are different kind of philosophies uh, playing, um, playing out. Um, so I thought that was quite interesting in terms of when I was doing the, the research. So, uh, um, so a little bit of Chipotle trivia for you. So um, before we move to the next um, slide, um, Russell, are there were there any other questions or comments coming in from uh, from our audience? Oh yeah, I, I have quite a few comments. I think uh, <laughs> okay. there's a lot of people here. Uh, one person saying it's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no right right or wrong answer. It's just more a, it's kind of like a good trivia, you know. So next time you go to Chipotle, you can kind of impress your friends. <laughs> So we have uh, someone saying, good for Steve, um, yep. and that's amazing. Um, what kind of, uh, let's see, what kind of coker do they use? Do they use microwaves? Uh, things like that. So, so uh, yeah, I think you surprised everybody a little bit. There. <laughs> good, good. Uh, again, it's amazing what you can find um, while you're researching a company in terms of, um, you know, the founder, the philosophy, and kind of just where it's been, right? It, it was founded in 1993, so then five years later, McDonald's, so they were still quite small when McDonald's invested in them, then they exited in 2006, and now it's 10 years later, so no wonder it's not in the news as much, but it's still kind of, you know, as we kind of study a company to see kind of what they, um, where they've been. So now, let's move on to the next slide. Or something here. Sure. Nope, that's not right. Yep. Uh, so it was. Yeah, that was the background. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So now we're on the right slide. Okay. I think. Okay. If, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Now it's working right. Okay. Okay. So then in terms of, so let's take a few minutes to talk then and hear about your experiences. So, you know, for those who have been to a Chipotle, so tell us kind of what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. For those who necessarily haven't been to a Chipotle yet, um, um, don't worry, you can kind of still uh, contribute maybe in the kind of in the next section. Or maybe is, is there a reason that you're not going to Chipotle? And again, there are no right or wrong answers. It's just more to be able to share your experiences. Oh. And after we spend a few, a few minutes on that, we'll go to the next set of questions um, that are on the screen. OK. Uh, oh, I'm getting a lot of them coming in now. Uh, let's okay. see here. Uh, they're moving too fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We like the participation. <laughs> so, um, Okay, we have a lot of, I love Chipotle's, uh, one person indicated that they like to order online. Mm, um, mm -hmm. Let's see here, um, some haven't been to Chipotle. Uh, one indicates they love the fresh flavors and the fact that mm -hmm. there's are gluten-free options um, mm -hmm. for somebody on dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. The food is healthy. Um, let's see here. So we have a yeah, we have a lot of people who have been to Good. Chipotle's. The food is excellent. Service is excellent. Uh, I'm seeing that in several places. Uh, food is fresh and affordable. Tofu is yummy. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah. Chicken so bowl so. Is Favorite, so it seems like a lot of people have been to uh, Chipotle's. 
So then that way you can see then, based on your answers, um, that kind of the philosophy is working, right? In terms of they wanted fresh ingredients, they wanted it to be kind of um, prepared from a culinary perspective. We may not know exactly how it's prepared. Um, kind of, I, you know, I haven't come across those articles in terms of what cooking techniques they necessarily use. But, um, but in terms of, so their philosophy is working is what I'm hearing from you from a consumer perspective. Um, so then let's switch for a moment and put your business um, hat on. So then what, uh, from a marketplace perspective, and let's say we're looking across all um, restaurants or kind of fast food, um, what do you think are its competitive advantages? So remember when we, you know, studied competitive advantage, that's something that Chipotle probably does better than other companies. So what do you think are its competitive advantages? Um, and Russell, I think we moved ahead accidentally on the Did screen. We? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So in terms of, so going back to the second um, set of questions, um, you know, why don't we spend a moment on its competitive advantages and then we'll move down um, in terms of uh, kind of discussing the other questions. Freshness, uh, food quality is better, food type, quick service, uh, prices and customer service are advantages. Um, they have fresh ingredients, good customer mm -hmm. service. Price is not bad, so it's kind of along the same lines. Yeah. So you think it's worth? So what I'm hearing is that you think it's worth the money, um, and that's a really important factor in terms of it's a competitive advantage that you think if there's value for money that you're going back often. I have a feeling that those of you who like it probably go fairly often. Correct? That's probably a fair assumption. Uh, and that's and so and hold that thought because we're going to talk about that later on in our discussion in terms of how frequently you go. Do you go like once a week? You know, every uh, maybe a month, every month. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about that too. But I'm just planting a seed for later on in our discussion. Mm -hmm. So good. So I, what I'm hearing from kind of the comments is that that philosophy that we talked about a couple slides ago is really playing into what we consider Chipotle's uh, competitive advantages. Um, and so now you can start to see a link as kind of the, their philosophy and what Steve kind of um, started with and that now still being carried through um, and, and is a reason for their success. So let's move to kind of to the next um, question. Who are its competitors? Like how would you think about um, Chipotle's competitors? Like is it McDonald's? Is it a restaurant? Is it Panera? Is it Taco Bell? Is it eating at home? Like, how do you think about their competitors? Oh boy, we got a list here. Um, Taco <laughs> Bell, Olive Garden, <laughs> um, Subway, uh, mm -hmm. Tijuana Flats, uh, Moe's, Taco Bell. Uh, someone just indicated fast food. Uh, McDonald's, Subway, Taco Bell. Baja Fresh, mm -hmm, Hot mm -hmm. Burritos, um, I think that's supposed to be Panera. Um, mm -hmm. No, this is good. Chili's, Chili's, so, so yep. it sounds like they're on the right track. Yeah, they're absolutely on the right track. And kind of my only comment is, is this, is like, let's say you're working for Chipotle, right? You're, let's say Steve asked you to kind of say, you know, do an analysis of competitors. And so the only comments I have here are, it depends on kind of how you view competitors. So at the narrowest level, it would be somebody with probably a similar menu like Baja Fresh. You know, it's very burrito driven. Um, in I think in Boston, there's um, uh, there's like, is, uh, I, I forget, there's, um, uh, you know, there's some regional chains that are very burrito driven. I know there's one specifically in Boston. There's, um, uh, you know, I, I see some at the airports. So there's, um, you know, kind of a local chain too that can easily be competitor. So is it burrito? Is it are, is it restaurants that make burritos their competitors? Is it? I would, you know, so that could be one way of looking at competitors. And at the broadest level, you can argue McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's are also competitors because you're saying, okay, it's lunchtime. Where do I want to go? Right. So you can also view competitors as Okay, who is um, who can provide that service for what you're looking for? Let's say for lunch, 
And, um, and then the other kind of, you know, extreme example of competitors is, well, let's say you're on a, you know, kind of a tight budget. Are you going to go spend the money at, um, at Chipotle or are you going to make something at home? So it's, and so these are all kind of different ways to think about competition. I would even argue that eating at home, bringing your lunch is competition to Chipotle. Um, and if they don't show value for money, yeah, you might bring your lunch at home, from home on, on some days. And, uh, and then if you feel like a burger another day, that's also competition for Chipotle because as tastes change, you're going to, you know, vote with your wallet uh, on, on different, um, for, for different chains, kind of depending on what you're in the mood for, what you think is worth the money, and, uh, and all that. So these are different ways to think about competitors. So I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, so again, in, in terms of as you go and think about next time for lunch, this is how you kind of can, or dinner, you can kind of weigh um, how you're making choices with, from a company perspective of, okay, you are making all these choices. Well, for Chipotle, they have to think about that too, of how consumers make decisions. So with that said, uh, on the last question, what can Chipotle improve? So for all the people who are really happy with Chipotle, um, what do you think that they can do better? Um, that if you can, you know, let's say you were able to kind of uh, give some feedback to the store manager, um, what would you kind of uh, uh, provide suggestions for? Is there anything on the menu? Um, I heard something about gluten-free, so there's probably, you know, they probably got that feedback and then incorporated to their menu. Um, uh, you know, are there any other things that you think that they could be doing better? Oh, yeah, we've got a few coming in now. Um, very crowded at mine, more seating. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, the, the drink menu, um, better seating in the dining room. If, instead of chips, offer veggies and bean dip. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, keep costs competitive, high quality food and convenience, more locations, none around where I live. Uh, adding ground beef, I think that would be great. Uh, another one on more seating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. these are all things that, um, that if I were Steve, I'd want to hear. And these are all things that they could probably address. I'm sure the online ordering that somebody mentioned earlier, um, I'm sure that is designed to help with the lines. Um, so that way you don't have to wait in line. Um, I'm sure there's still a line to pick it up, but it uh, hopefully is not as uh, long as if you were to order there. So I'm sure they're slowly trying to address these, um, these improvements uh, between technology or the menu and, uh, and, and making the menu kind of always um, important given that they only have a few ingredients um, and that it's a lot of mix and match those ingredients into burritos or salads or tacos, um, you know, they're very ingredient driven. So, uh, so I'm sure, you know, being able to add an ingredient takes a lot of science and a lot of research for them because, you know, it's, um, uh, it's, a, lot, it's a big effort to kind of uh, add an ingredient. So I could see that from their perspective. So before we move on to kind of the next slide, um, Russell, are there any other kind of comments that, um, that are coming in um, from our um, audience? Yeah, I, I've seen uh, a few more locations. Uh, we have mm -hmm. some students in the Caribbean that would like to try it out for the first time. So mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for, for them to open up in the Caribbean. Yeah, um, yes. <laughs> Uh, what one of them uh, evidently where they live uh, they need better parking oh yeah I can see that yep that's an important one um, more more vegetarian options mm -hmm. um, one complaint drinks taste like sugar water um, let's see I think that kind of gives you a Later. Yep. No, that's a that's a really good yeah. That's a, that's a really good overview of kind of your um, your experience, the thoughts about kind of Chipotle as a company. So thank, these are right. wonderful comments. So please so please continue to to share. We're gonna um, uh, move on to kind of the next slide, and then we're gonna take just a little bit of a kind of a detour, 
and talk about what happened in 2015, and then we'll uh, go back to asking um, more discussion questions. Okay. Actually, somebody brought up the fact that uh, don't get people sick anymore. So <laughs> that's right. And that's that's, in, that's uh, so, so the hold that thought. Yeah. Sorry. Right, so hold that thought. <laughs> Um, so part of the reason that I chose Chipotle kind of for our um, case study is that, you know, um, we've heard such great uh, satisfaction and feedback from you as a consumer, and, uh, and that's really important kind of given what happened last year. So in one year, uh, Chipotle had basically three, three crises. They faced, uh, number one, they faced a cork shortage and had to find a new supplier to satisfy demand. So, you know, when a company like Chipotle puts an ingredient, and when we, you know, kind of the comment before of, oh, more vegetarian or more ground beef, before they can put any kind of ingredients onto the menu, they have to make sure that they have all the suppliers in place. You know, they have 2,000 locations. And so maybe they go through, let's just say, hypothetically, 10 pounds of pork a day, right, uh, or five pounds. It doesn't matter the amount. It's, a, it's you know, they have to do this math of saying, well, how are we going to make sure we have enough suppliers in place that no matter how many people we come in, we can ensure a steady stream of pork, chicken, beef, onions, you know, whatever all their ingredients are. This one happened to be a pork shortage, but it's the same kind of science that we have to make sure we have enough green peppers for their veggies or their rice or their tortillas. It's the same thing, and so they have to work, um, you know, sometimes years in advance to make sure that they have enough um, supplies in place to ensure that every day there's enough pork and, and all the ingredients. So when there's a pork shortage, all the people that are coming in for that particular ingredient are now unsatisfied. Maybe they don't like the other ingredients, so that could also fall, the, or that could also create kind of a shortage in sales or lower sales. And so that's important from a company um, perspective to make sure you have all the systems and the supply chain um, kind of humming along. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> um, that uh, about 500 customers across a good you know, cross-section of the country contracted a foodborne illness. And so, yes, when you get sick, you know, number one, you're not going to go back to the place that, that necessarily made you sick. And, and not just for them, it's a ripple effect. It was all over the news. You know, people stayed away. Um, and once something like that happens, you start to question, well, you know, I'm not going to go there right now. Let them, you know, kind of solve their problems. Maybe I'll go later. And the more, you know, as we've seen, the more you don't go, then it becomes, it doesn't become a habit anymore. You become habituated to another place for lunch or another place for dinner. And so then the, it, it magnifies uh, the loss for Chipotle. Um, and so even though it was 500 customers and they have millions of customers, that ripple effect is gigantic. And that does you know, uh, affect everyone when you start to think twice about going there. And so because of that, they had to, um, and I still think it was the right thing to do, they had to close some of their stores to focus on food safety and making sure that it doesn't happen again, right? Um, their reputation, their service, as you as you cited, are you know they're important. Their menu is the you know is the most important thing as as what we've seen. You're going there for food, and uh, so they've closed the stores and uh, and they've all been reopened. They've all kind of been re reorganized and everything. And so now the challenge is, you know, are, do, are people coming back? And do people still think of this as a problem, or do you think they've really solved it? And so that's kind of where they are. Um, and um, um, why don't we jump, uh, Russell, why don't we jump to the next slide, and then we'll kind of uh, break for kind of comments and whatnot. Sure. Okay. There we go. Okay. So then, um, you know, so you can see then in terms of, uh, so this is our stock price. Chipotle is a public company. And so you can see, you know, that uh, every time there's a dip, that's probably when, um, you know, one of these uh, news stories broke out. And so then they'd recover. And then you can see they they take a dip and recover, take a bigger dip and recover. And then towards the end of the year, it was just going down, 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 because at every given point, it's not just one thing. 
And then there's a lot of uncertainty of when the stores were going to reopen. Can they fix their problems? So the stock price of a company is going to take into consideration all that's happened. And so you know, this is a, a perfect mirror for kind of the, the issues that they were facing last year. And, um, uh, and so you know, it's, it's, uh, it's quite telling of how, you know, what, what a big financial impact this had on, um, uh, on the company. So kind of putting your business hat on and not your consumer hat, would you invest in, uh, in Chipotle now? It's a, good, it's, it's a lot lower in price but there's still a lot of risk. So, um, so that's what I mean by, uh, so these are the decisions that if you're an investor in Chipotle or uh, you know, thinking about it, these are the things that you'd have to decide on if it's worth it or not. And again, uh, there's no right or wrong, yeah, there's no right or wrong answer, so I'd love to hear kind of what, um, what people are saying. Um, we have some yeses, we have one who says, uh, I would invest, uh, basically buy low, sell high. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, okay, good time to invest while selling low. So I think uh, some of them yeah. uh, see that as an yeah. opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, that's, exactly, that's exactly right. Because, and I would say that's probably a fair uh, assessment yeah. because yeah, because I think in terms of um, given the comments that, and given your experiences and how strong they are, and that's the thing that people have to decide for themselves is does the, um, uh, do the customer loyalty and the customer excitement about Chipotle outweigh kind of the, the three issues that they faced last year? Or are the three issues that they faced last year so serious, so kind of um, pervasive that they can't recover? And what it sounds like to me is that they've recovered based on your comments and that you are still excited to um, be a customer there. Yeah, I, I see a majority of the yeses um, yep. for that. Okay, well good, I'm, um, that's exactly, so I'm kind of reflecting back to you since you can't see me, um, kind of what I'm hearing from you. So good. So then why don't, if there, are, if there are any more comments, let's take them now, otherwise we'll kind of move into the next section of our discussion, um, which is what's next for Chipotle. Yeah, I, I just had a couple, um, let me just go back here that I saw that might be, uh, someone mentioned the fact that there should be uh, more backup sources uh, for, uh, you know, suppliers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I bet that um, I would, you know, take a pretty good, pretty good guess that that's probably what they've done, um, kind of given given the problem that they faced. This could also be a problem of they grew too fast um, uh, uh, because they're doing a good job in terms of delivering value to customers that maybe they didn't even know uh, that they were outgrowing their suppliers. Um, so, you know, we don't know kind of what's been going on at the executive level in terms of their conversations. But it could be that they grew too fast and their suppliers couldn't handle it, um, and therefore backup sources need to be kind of instituted. Um, it could be that maybe the suppliers couldn't um, meet some of the standards. Um, because remember, Chipotle has higher standards of um, kind of ingredients than maybe some other places. And so the supplier, too, has to you know, meet the bar. Uh, and this is where, you know, if you're, if you're meeting those expectations, they're gonna, Chipotle is going to buy from you. But if you're, let's say, a pork supplier that hasn't been able to meet those um, kind of uh, uh, requirements, well, then you can't sell to Chipotle, and then therefore Chipotle has a lower level of kind of inventory. So, so we as a consumer may not know exactly the true cause of it, uh, but I'm sure having backup um, suppliers is part of their plan to, to not have, have have this happen again. Um, so yeah, that's there's a very good observation. Here. Okay. Yeah, there's, a, there's another comment here that I thought was interesting. I'm sorry, Russell, uh, you were cutting out there. I couldn't hear that. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the, no problem. The, the 
the comment is uh, they could uh, sponsor farms to ensure that they keep their costs down. And uh, I think they're talking about the quality of the, the, the uh, uh, supplies up or the, the, uh, the yeah. ingredients up. So you I think that's a one. Bring a, um, kind of like what Per does, I think. Yes. That's exactly right. I think that's a wonderful idea, and I bet that's being entertained, um, uh, um, kind of, you know, as an as an option for them. Um, that's the thing in terms of, you know, with growth, they have to start planning for these things and really working backwards to make sure whether it's at the farm level, um, whether it's at the supplier level, um, and having those requirements in place for people to meet them. So you're absolutely right. That's a that's a great suggestion that um, that they should be doing, if not already. And we, as the customer, you know, don't really know if you know how how far back they go into their supply chain. But I have a feeling, you know, they're asking these questions. So yeah, that's a that's a great observation. Okay. All righty. So then, yes. Yeah, so let's move uh, to the the next slide. Okay. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So now, kind of, you know, let's kind of step back, and you know, we know that it's um, that they're, you know, doing well, doing what they do well, right? We know that for sure. We also know that it sounds like they fix their problems, right? Like in terms of for all the people who probably eaten there recently, uh, you're happy with the experience. You're going to go back and everything like that. So now, kind of, given all of that, what should it do? Uh, and a lot of you cited menu as kind of their biggest competitive advantage. So given that, should they continue focusing on their existing menu? Uh, you know, maybe make some changes uh, like maybe, you know, more veggies or ground beef and all that. Or should Chipotle offer beer, margaritas, pizza, Asian food, or burgers? And what are the pros and cons for doing each one? Uh, in terms of what are the pros and cons of just focusing on its menu? Uh, doing burritos well, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, or, you know, Chipotle is, a, you know, what's it called fast casual or fast, you know, it's in the fast food category, but it's slightly elevated in terms of like quality perspective. So given that they fix their problem, should they start focusing on other things to make more money, uh, to show growth? Uh, to have other ideas, you know, maybe, maybe given that Steve's background is in culinary, maybe he's had kind of an inkling to, you know, uh, to provide these these types of foods on a mass market too. So again, these are just kind of like we're in the boardroom of Chipotle. We're going to discuss what they should do. So um, uh, again, no right or wrong answers, but I'd love to hear from you and how you're thinking about what how they're going to make their decisions. Well, there's definitely a, a yes on the beer. Um, <laughs> uh, as far as the pizza is concerned, one person indicates that it really doesn't kind of fit in with their, their category of food. Okay. Uh, what if you can customize your pizza, just like you can customize your burrito? Beer and margaritas are good. Focus on existing. Becoming too diverse can dilute quality. Um, other ideas good, but burgers overdone. Mm -hmm. um, I, they mean by that, you know, they can get a burger anywhere. Um, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, you can. There's a lot of a um, lot of a lot of places you can go to get a burger and fries. You don't have to go to. You know, you don't need a new chain per se. Um, Asian food causes people to try different things. Mm -hmm. uh, some, evidently, in some stores, they do sell beer and margaritas already. Uh, yeah, so maybe it was one of their kind of initial test um, test locations. Yeah, evidently, in the Chicago area. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the note from this. Uh, Introduce a happy hour. Mm -hmm. 
yes, and they can sell some of their um, chips and guac. They can, you know, they can probably maybe create a menu like that, some of their tacos. Yep, these are all really good. The, again, this is exactly, I would venture to say that these are exactly the types of conversations that their executives have had, right? So what are the pros and cons? They have to kind of hash those out before they have a strategy to, to move forward. Um, so, yeah, that, um, I, yep. I think that's what we're seeing here um, in some of the comments. Um, you know, as some people are feeling that they should stay with their base. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, let maintenance people and others say mm -hmm. are saying you know, branch out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, well, why? Uh, so, uh, if there are more comments, then let's let's. Um, share them. Otherwise, let's move to the next slide and see kind of what they're what they're doing, what they've decided to do. Oh, I could go on all evening. <laughs> <laughs> this um, is great. I love I love the participation. Thank you, uh, everyone, for kind of sharing your opinion. Uh, yeah, here, here's a, an interesting one. If I were CEO, I would educate the uh, public about why food is healthier. People eat junk food because it's convenient. It's really nice to have fast food where you know you're getting healthy food and it takes away from the core food type. Yeah, you're right. That's a really good observation. Great comments here. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very kind of thoughtful. They're very insightful. And these are the things that, you know, um, if I were the CEO, I'd want to hear. You're absolutely right. interest of time, I guess we have to move on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, we can go we can go all evening, I'm sure, about the um, kind of, you know, what Chipotle should be doing for their future. So that's exactly so, you know, we're gonna take one at a time. So beer and margaritas, as the person from Chicago um, kind of uh, alluded to, they are already being tested in several locations. So I think the unanimous, or it was pretty uh, majority, I think, said that this is a good idea. Right. Uh, so then moving to pizza, see, now this is where you have to give them credit, right, like in terms of Chipotle. Chipotle is not, is developing these other ideas, but they're not calling them Chipotle. So apparently they have a, they own, just like McDonald's owned a portion of Chipotle, right, in terms of from a um, company perspective, uh, Chipotle owns three restaurants called Pizzeria Locale. Uh, not named Chipotle, but is they're owned by Chipotle. Um, and so that way there's no confusion. So um, what are your thoughts on this? And also, have you, uh, ha, because there's only three, I have not been to one, so if anyone has by chance been to a Pizzeria Locale, uh, we'd love to hear from you in terms of your experiences and kind of like, were there any Similarities, uh, you know, at the time maybe you didn't know that it was owned by Chipotle, but now that you do, was there anything in your experience that you're like, oh, well, this is they did this just like Chipotle, or, huh, I, you know, I can I observe these things. Uh, I think pretty much the consensus is, for the most part, that it, it's a good idea. Um, one indicates no confusion, so you know, no confusion over the difference between a Chipotle and a pizzeria. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's one that indicates bad idea. There's tons of pizza joints. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, yeah, it looks like everybody, uh, for the most part, agrees that it, it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I would be, um, nope. uh, I would be excited to try a pizzeria locale. Just if nothing else, just to see kind of how similar or different it is from a Chipotle. Um, and uh, and the person who said there are you know millions of pizzerias, you're absolutely right. But I wonder what Chipotle's take on pizza is, right? Maybe you can customize it. That was just a guess of mine. Um, um, or maybe it's all kind of pre-made. Who knows? Um, but uh, for the next one, in terms of the sh uh, the shop house Southeast Asian Kitchen, there is one near me, and I've been to it, and it is very. It, it was very delicious. It was kind of exceeded my expectations. The menu is, um, uh, I wouldn't say similar to Chipotle, you, but you can customize a lot of different things. And so 
it was a way to kind of have Asian food um, in a similar style to kind of how Chipotle set up, but um, uh, but not really. And it served over rice, so I found a lot of similarities between kind of um, the shop house and Chipotle in terms of it's very rice heavy. There's a meat and a veggie. And so it felt kind of like they were taking the Chipotle kind of the, the framework and the idea, um, kind of the, the structure of a Chipotle, but then really customizing it to Asian food. So I enjoyed it, um, and I would totally go back there again. And I could see how they're doing it the Chipotle way. So if anyone else has been to um, a shop house, you know, please share your um, experiences. But I can see why that would be um, um, a good investment in terms of our future growth. And then in terms of the burgers, so uh, in my research, they were they just trademarked it. They haven't um, opened up any, but they ha they own the trademark to Better Burger. So um, th I think they've trademarked it. So with the idea of that maybe they'll you know kind of uh, focus on burgers at the right time. So clearly they haven't done anything with it just yet, but maybe they're in the research stage. Maybe they're in the testing stage. Maybe they're kind of researching what menu to uh, provide. Um, since you know, as as we've heard kind of throughout throughout today's discussion, that the menu is really what drives. Uh, Chipotle in terms of they really focus on that as part of their philosophy. So I can see how that would be kind of the first thing that they would have to decide on um, for a burger place in the future. So, um, uh, Russell, I'd love to hear kind of, you know, what the audience had to say in terms of any comments for these. I know I kind of, you know, uh, talk pretty fast on this slide. There's a lot to cover. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't see that anybody's actually eaten one of these. Uh, but um, there's been a couple of uh, cuts that it is a, a good idea um, to do it as like a separate division. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, something else uh, that I see here, and it's not necessarily about the, the shop house, but it's about the fact that there's a sushi place near one of our students who models itself kind of like Chipotle. So, you know, fresh oh. food. Yeah. So you can talk a little bit about copycats too. Um, that's that's exactly right. I'm sure you know. I'm sure there are a lot of people who like the fact that the the, the thing about Chipotle is they prepare individual ingredients in a big quantity and then assemble it. So I'll, I could see how a lot of people would say, "Oh, well, let me you know let me try that uh, for this type of food." So I can see how that would be that would inspire other people to try it out that way. Um, but like we said, we know it's in the execution. It has to be, and we know it's in the supply chain. So just because you could do it in one location doesn't mean you can then do it at 2,000 locations. Um, and so, but I, I bet Chipotle has inspired a lot of copycats because people can say, oh, I want to be the Chipotle of sushi. I want to be the Chipotle of Greek food. I, I'm making it up. I, you know, I'm just, um, uh, I want to be the Chipotle of uh, Chinese food. Um, and so, uh, so th that's I think that's what people mean of making kind of large quantities of ingredients that can be assembled into different forms for kind of the output. Right? It can be assembled into a salad, a burrito, a taco um, uh, type of thing. So you're absolutely right. And that's a that's a good observation, and um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, a lot of the a lot of them indicate that they're not familiar with the uh, the shop house. Uh, uh. Yeah, and, and and like I said, I wasn't. I didn't know that it was owned by Chipotle until I started doing the research, and then um, there happened to be one that opened up in within the last year near where I live, and so I thought, okay, well, let's try it out. Um, so, but it's good to know that if you do see these signs um, for these uh, restaurants, that you know that they're owned by Chipotle, and if you know if kind of life takes you to one of them, uh, you can you know you should then be able to say, okay, this element, you can see how it was kind of informed by Chipotle, this element is its own. So um, you can kind of do your own case study when you go there next time. Okay. So then um, if, there are, if there aren't any more comments, then why don't we move um, towards the wrap-up phase of our discussion today. Okay. And move to the next slide. The trademarking? 
Oh, um, yes. So, so um, the the trademarks the Better Burgers they 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 trademarked it and um, they haven't done anything with it just yet. Um, but I bet they're in the research phase of kind of the menu and you know as as somebody so articulately pointed out, they you know the world doesn't need another burger place. So I have a feeling that whatever Chipotle decides to do, their differentiation is going to be based on their menu, which means they are probably still in the research phase of that. All right. And we should have the slide showing just a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, uh, so yeah. So first of all, you know, I, I, I felt that today's uh, discussion was very rich with your personal experiences, with your examples, with your comments and observations. But thank you very much for kind of being an active participant um, in today's discussion. Uh, and let me just take a moment to kind of then link some of the things that we talked about into you know what you've learned in the classroom. So we've talked about competitive advantage. Um, I think a lot of you said it's their menu, it's their customer service, it's their fresh ingredients um, as, uh, as, uh, as something that we can kind of identify as their competitive advantage. Competition, we spent a moment on, you know, we can, we can be as narrow as something like that, something similar to their menu, like who, who else creates burritos like Baja Fresh or uh, whatnot, um, to kind of um, other places that you would think about going for lunch. So it could be, you know, types of food. So it could be burgers or Asian or pizza, or it could be kind of where you spend your food, or spend your money on lunch. Are you eating at home? Are you eating at your friend's house? Are you eating at work? Are you eating at Chipotle? So there's a whole range of how we can view competition. Um, continuous improvement. We didn't call this out particularly, but I put it in there because without continuous improvement they probably wouldn't have been able to solve their big problems last year, right? In terms of in one year to kind of have those three things happen all at once um, and then to kind of re re regain and, um, uh, and, and from a cu customer perspective still have that loyalty, they had to do a lot of improvements and have to have probably some really tough conversations to be able to say, okay, how are we going to get this ship uh, back on track? Um, so that's why I put it in there because that's a mindset that we as consumers may not necessarily see, but I bet those empl the employees that work there see it all the time of how do we do things better. Um, you know, somebody said the gluten-free menu. Well, you know, that probably had to come over time too in terms of they, they got that feedback and they said, well, what do we do now in terms of how do we address this and how do we improve? Um, and so improvement doesn't mean necessarily fixing a problem. Improvement can also be taking, you know, consumer suggestions. Um, and incorporating them. We spent a lot of time on supply chain um, and the comments in terms of um, backup um, and everything. That was a wonderful comment. Uh, but yeah, they probably had to do a lot of analysis and, um, and, and, and probably figure out, do we start working at the farm level? Uh, and, and what level do we really you know, build those relationships? So supply chain and sourcing kind of go hand in hand. And so the person who made the farm comments, that's this is kind of probably under sourcing of should they start, you know, building their own farm so they can have a kind of a continuous source of um, ingredients. We talked about stock price and how it's a mirror to kind of the problems and opportunities the company faces. Um, customer loyalty. I've heard a lot of very loyal customers today, but I also wanted to share something quick with you. So just yesterday, uh, Chipotle announced a new loyalty program that they're starting as of this Friday. So for three months, they're going to test a loyalty program, and it's based on number of times in a month that you visit. So that's why I kind of alluded to the consistency um, in, earlier in our discussion. So this is to reward the, the frequent customer. So if you go there four times, your rewards are going to be higher than if you go once a month. So um, I think in terms of... Um, uh, that's how they're doing it um, in terms of that it's a test for three months. So, uh, so depending on how it does, then they'll roll it out kind of nationwide. So as you can see, they test out a lot of different things before they're rolled out um, uh, across their 2,000 uh, restaurants. 
and then growth strategy. So growth strategy is kind of what we talked about, the Asian food, the pizza, the beer and margaritas, the burgers. These are all growth ideas. And, um, and they were smart not to call them Chipotle, right? They're going to probably have independent, standalone brands um, that are owned by the company that are probably, you know, probably very much driven by their philosophy. But, uh, but they're going to be different menus. So, like you said, so it doesn't necessarily compete um, in terms of from a customer. Uh, it doesn't confuse the customer. It doesn't compete in the same way. So that's kind of a, um, you know, uh, so, the, so going back to my, you know, First kind of com first set of comments. You know, we've learned these concepts in class, and um, and it's important to then take a just a real world uh, example, a real world company, and then be able to say how you know a, a company that you all know and know pretty well how all of these concepts then apply. So, um, uh, Russell, are there any comments at this point? Otherwise, we can kind of move to the the next one. Uh, um, let's see. Um, how will they, one of the questions is how will they keep track of uh, loyal customers of the loyal customers? I guess is you know I think um, well the, so the loyal um, loyalty program is called Chiptopia, so I bet there's some kind of card or registration that they you would have to use or kind of sign up for. Um, so it starts this Friday. Um, so they, they they just said they were launching a program. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of tracking. Otherwise, how how are they going to know? You're absolutely right. And they'll probably start unveiling it at their stores, at their restaurants on Friday. Um, one question, do they franchise? So this, um, they, they don't apparently. Um, they have a few franchise locations when they were owned by McDonald's because McDonald's were, was pressuring them to franchise. Uh, but it's not in their kind of company philosophy to franchise. Uh, for the moment. Okay. And then kind of um, as we go to the next slide, um, you know, we'll open up to kind of any other questions and comments. And it's really kind of as a final reflection in terms of I'd love to hear from you in terms of what do you, you know, how, what did you learn today? Kind of how has that, um, how has your opinion changed? And some of you have already kind of um, uh, been so bold to kind of give advice to Steve Ells. But you know, kind of um, covering all the different topics that we've covered today, kind of what um, you know, what would you what would you do now if you're a Steve, or kind of what did you learn? Again, um, you know, please feel free to share. You've been wonderful sharing your um, opinions and experiences. A uh, little slow coming in here. Uh, yeah, it takes a moment to think. These are probably. Um, uh, you know, more opinions, more kind of you're formulating them. Uh, one person, just a comment, I didn't know that they owned other branches uh, mm -hmm. or that they were working on a, a customer loyalty program. Um, another one, uh, what is it? Let me see here. Uh, what I learned about McDonald's. Oops. What I learned about, oh yes, the McDonald's. Yep. Um, they surprised by that. Uh, let's see here. So, has your opinion changed at all about Chipotle? One person is baffled by the fact that McDonald's invested in Chipotle. <laughs> Uh, well, they probably wanted a high growth investment. You know, uh, McDonald's is a mature company. They pro uh, I mean, the thing is, um, Chipotle is growing faster than McDonald's, even though McDonald's is a big company. It's much bigger. A lot of people haven't visited the chain. Mm -hmm. uh, one person indicates that it's not the friendliest of places, never received any marketing material um, or see signs, and I think they, they meant that they haven't been there, they haven't... Uh, uh, oh, heard you know, about them per se. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, for those of you who, ne who haven't necessarily heard about the company or um, uh, and everything like that, 
I, uh, I think there's still a lot of learnings here that you can apply, you know, kind of be observant next time you go into kind of a, um, a you know, either McDonald's or um, any other type of fast food chain. A lot of things that we're talking about, like think about where they get their food from a supply chain perspective. You know, think about the, um, you know, how are they growing? Um, and like I said, some of these companies own other companies. So who, who is owned by what? Um, and so those are those are the things that I found interesting. And so these are kind of the things that you can um, you know just be observant uh, about um, uh, you know in terms of what is McDonald's competitive advantage. Let's say you like Baja Fresh. Let's say you like Panera. These are the same type of questions that you can start to think about when you go to a different restaurant um, or kind of you know place for lunch or dinner. So a lot of the concepts can still be applied to other places that you. Are eating at um, if you haven't been to a Chipotle. We're using Chipotle as kind of the just the company um, today, but we can have the same discussion with any one of their competitors. Yeah, here's somebody who is suggesting uh, to consider an African American segment that would be interested in some of the authentic food, such as they do for like the Asians. Oh yeah, yep, that's a really good idea. seeing a lot of thank yous at this point. Okay. Well, thank you. You've made it very interactive for me, too. Um, and uh, uh, and I, I very much enjoyed your thoughtful comments. So thank you for your participation. And um, uh, I look forward to our next one. Okay. Um, so I think we're over time at this point. So it's yep. about 10 after 8 Eastern time. So uh, I'd like to, uh, at this point, wrap it up. I'd just like to thank uh, Debbie for taking the time to do this webinar. I um, appreciate uh, the great uh, case study that you did here. And uh, I think it got people thinking. And we certainly, we certainly had some great uh, interaction here uh, on, our, on the, on the uh, questions uh, that have come in. Um, so, and I'd like to thank everybody for attending our webinar. Um, I hope you, you know, found something uh, interesting about this. Um, and uh, just want to say that within 24 hours, you'll receive an email from me with a link uh, to complete a survey to let us know what your thoughts are on the webinar. Um, feel free. It's only a three-question survey, so it'll take like two seconds to fill out. Uh, but we, you know, want to kind of get your feedback on on the webinar and how what you thought of it, uh, so that we can kind of use that feedback when we go to do the next one. Um, also, we will be uh, posting a recording uh, on the community in the business academic section of the community. Uh, hopefully later this week. If not uh, this week, then it'll probably be almost immediately after the Fourth of July. Uh, weekend. So uh, if you want to view the uh, webinar again, um, you'll be able to do that. Um, and you'll, as I said, you'll find the uh, recording on, in the academic business section of the community. So I want to thank everybody uh, for taking uh, some time to, uh, you know, participate in this case. And uh, we'll be uh, running another one at some point in the future. Um, so be uh, be on the lookout for those uh, invitations in the message center uh, on your uh, your student portal. I uh, hope everybody has a nice evening and uh, have a, a great weekend. Thank you, Russell. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you.